What if water felt like honey? For bacteria, it does. Welcome to the world of low Reynolds number, where the physics of swimming are turned upside down. This is how bacteria and tiny organisms experience life, where water feels more like syrup and inertia, the tendency of an object to keep moving in the same direction, plays a much smaller role than it does for larger things like us. Unlike humans who can kick and glide effortlessly in water, microorganisms have to constantly move just to get anywhere. Ever wondered why bacteria don't just swim like fish? That's because of the scallop theorem, named after the back and forth motion of a scallop, which says that simple back and forth movements won't work for propulsion at their scale. They'd just end up right where they started. Instead, they've developed clever tricks like spinning their tails, flagella, like tiny propellers to push themselves forward. Picture a microscopic corkscrew drilling through honey. <laughs> That's how bacteria move. They can't stir their surroundings effectively to bring in food the way larger organisms might. Instead, they rely on diffusion, waiting for nutrients to randomly float their way. But why does all this matter? Understanding life at low Reynolds numbers helps scientists design better medical treatments such as targeted drug delivery using tiny synthetic swimmers that mimic bacteria. It also explains why some bacteria move in seemingly random patterns because they're trying to outrun diffusion, moving just far enough to reach a better food source without wasting energy. Think of it like being at a buffet and slowly moving from table to table rather than wildly running around grabbing everything in sight. Even though their movement may seem simple, it's actually a highly efficient survival strategy honed over billions of years. This seemingly simple movement is actually a sophisticated survival strategy, but the physics behind it are even more fascinating. For example, bacteria use rotating helical tails to move forward, much like how a ship's propeller works. However, because they live in a world dominated by viscosity rather than inertia, their swimming efficiency is relatively low, yet their energy requirements are tiny and they don't need to move fast to survive. Instead of racing, they play the long game, carefully navigating their environment and responding to chemical cues, a process known as chemotaxis, to find food and avoid harmful substances. So the next time you look at a drop of water under a microscope, remember there's an entire world of tiny swimmers struggling against forces we can't even imagine. They may not be Olympic champions, but they've mastered the art of survival in a world where physics works very differently. At our everyday scale, motion is governed by inertia. Objects continue to move after force is applied and resist stopping immediately. However, in the microscopic world where bacteria and tiny organisms swim, an entirely different set of rules applies. This is a world of low Reynolds number where viscous forces dominate and inertia is virtually meaningless. The Reynolds number, a dimensionless quantity representing the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces, determines how objects move through a fluid. In this tiny realm, creatures cannot coast or glide. Every movement they make is dictated by the resistance of the fluid around them. Understanding life at low Reynolds numbers gives us a fascinating insight into how microorganisms navigate their environment in ways that defy our everyday experience. Scientists have demonstrated that a swimming human in water has a Reynolds number around 10 to the power four, meaning inertia plays a significant role. However, an E. coli bacterium at a Reynolds number of around 10 to the minus four experiences an environment where stopping moving means instant stillness. In the microscopic world, reciprocal motions, such as a scallop opening and closing its shell, result in net forward movement. However, at low Reynolds numbers, such movements are completely ineffective. This principle, known as the scallop theorem, states that in highly viscous environments, movement must be non-reciprocal to produce locomotion. Simple back and forth motions cancel out because time has no directional preference. 
at this scale. Instead, microorganisms must use complex, cyclic deformations or rotating appendages to move effectively in a highly resistive medium. Bacteria such as E. coli swim by rotating their helical flagella in a corkscrew motion, enabling them to propel forward in a fluid where traditional swimming strokes would achieve nothing. Picture a person trying to row a boat in thick syrup with stiff oars. No matter how hard they row, the boat would not move. But if they use a flexible paddle that deforms differently on forward and backward strokes, they can generate movement. Microorganisms use specialized appendages like flagella and cilia to overcome the constraints of low Reynolds number environments. Flagella acts like rotating corkscrews, pushing bacteria forward, while cilia beat in coordinated wave-like patterns to generate propulsion. Um, the movement of these structures is governed by the Stokes equations, which describe the fluid dynamics at low Reynolds numbers. The fundamental challenge microorganisms face is to produce motion without relying on inertia, requiring them to constantly push against the surrounding fluid in asymmetric ways to move forward. Um, paramecia, single-celled organisms, use their hair-like cilia to sweep through water, achieving motion despite the surrounding viscosity. It's like trying to move through molasses by waving your hands. Instead of sudden bursts of speed, you must rely on slow, continuous, and deliberate motions to make progress. At microscopic scales, diffusion becomes the primary mode of nutrient and waste transport, as active stirring of fluid becomes ineffective. The speed at which molecules spread through diffusion is dictated by the diffusion constant, which is inversely proportional to distance squared. For microorganisms, this means their survival depends not on how fast they can swim, but on their ability to locate and stay in nutrient-rich areas while minimizing energy expenditure. Bacteria do not swim continuously to find food. Instead, they use a run and tumble strategy swimming in straight lines before randomly changing direction, allowing them to effectively sample their environment. Think of someone trying to smell food in a large room. Instead of running in random directions, they move a little, stop, and sniff, optimizing their search pattern. For microorganisms, efficiency is more important than speed. Since energy is a scarce resource, their locomotion strategies prioritize minimal energy expenditure. At low Reynolds numbers, movement efficiency is closely related to the shape and motion pattern of their propulsion appendages. The energy required to move through the environment is directly proportional to the square of velocity making slow, deliberate movements the most effective strategy. E. coli bacteria expend minimal energy by using their rotating flagella only when necessary, stopping periodically to reassess their environment. Imagine driving an electric car in heavy traffic. Accelerating too quickly wastes battery power, while slow and steady movement conserves energy for longer trips. Evolution has endowed microorganisms with remarkable adaptations that enable them to thrive in viscous environments. Their streamlined shapes, flexible appendages, and energy effluent swimming strategies have evolved to optimize survival in a world dominated by viscosity. Some bacteria form specialized structures, such as rotating flagellar motors, to navigate through fluids with minimal resistance, while others adopt passive strategies like attaching to surfaces and relying on fluid flow to transport them. Um, certain bacteria possess reversible motors that allow them to change direction instantly without wasting energy. Um, optimizing their exploration of nutrient gradients. It's like designing an efficient sailboat that adjusts its sails depending on wind direction to move optimally without wasting effort. Understanding low Reynolds number physics has practical applications in fields like bioengineering and medicine. Scientists are designing microscopic robots inspired by bacterial locomotion to navigate the human bloodstream for targeted drug delivery. These nanobots mimic bacterial flagella to move efficiently in highly viscous biological fluids, allowing for precise medical interventions at the cellular level. 
Um, researchers have developed artificial micro swimmers that can deliver drugs to targeted cancer cells by mimicking the helical motion of bacterial flagella. Imagine tiny robotic submarines that can navigate through thick oil, precisely reaching their targets without getting stuck or wasting energy. Simulating low Reynolds number environments poses unique challenges for scientists. Um, traditional computational fluid dynamics models, which rely on inertial effects, must be adapted to account for the dominance of viscosity. Accurate models require considering the intricate balance of forces at the microscopic scale and the non-reciprocal motion strategies needed for propulsion. Scientists use specialized software and experimental setups, such as observing artificial swimmers in high viscosity liquids like glycerin, to better understand bacterial motion. Um, simulating bacteria swimming in water is like trying to model a person walking through quicksand. Every step must be calculated with precision. Studying life at low Reynolds numbers reveals fundamental insights into fluid dynamics, biology, and evolution. It challenges our everyday understanding of motion and demonstrates how physical constraints shape biological adaptations. Whether it's bacteria swimming through water or the Earth's mantle flowing over millennia, the principles of low Reynolds number physics apply across diverse scales. And then these insights not only help us better understand the microscopic world, but also inspire technological advancements in medicine, robotics, and engineering. Future bio-inspired robots could revolutionize healthcare by navigating human tissues and bloodstream with efficiency learned from microorganisms. Exploring the low Reynolds number world is like entering an alien universe where the rules we take for granted no longer apply, offering a fresh perspective on how life adapts to its environment. 